Hey, welcome you back here to the Sports Mix on this Wyatt Wednesday. Wyatt Pelicano now join, uh, joins us, Shepherd Rams offensive lineman. Wyatt, how's it going, man? Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, it's, uh, it's another Wyatt Wednesday. It's game week because every week is game week uh, coming off a win. So, yeah, I mean, the vibes, the vibes are immaculate. We're coming, we're coming home this week, so it's all good stuff. A lot of things to be excited about. 38 nothing win for you and the Shepherd Rams on Saturday. Wyatt, probably the best all-around team performance so far of the season. What did you guys take away from it? How did it feel to see a complete team win? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that I think holds true. Um, we're, not, we're not satisfied by any means. Uh, there are things we can be better at on both sides of the ball. I mean, I think our, our I feel like our defense played very well, but, I mean, you guys have met Coach Klein, so you know he's a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and, yeah, they, so they, they even they feel like they got stuff to get that they can improve on. I know that our offense does. Uh, I still feel like we, we show glimpses there. I, I feel like I keep saying we're showing glimpses. Um, so, yeah, maybe we have more glimpses this week than usual, but I still don't think that we've shown how, uh, how high-powered and high-operating our offense can be. Um, but, yes, I mean, it is always good to win. We love to win. We expect to win. Um, so it, it's great when you when you're able to do that. Uh, but we're not we're not done, and I think I think we feel like we can uh, we can still be better. I'm looking at the numbers, and I, I slightly agree with you here. You look at just the final score alone of 38 nothing, and you say, "Wow, Shepherd's offense exploded!" But only nine first downs, uh, which is pretty low, lower than. Shippensburg, you still ran for over 100 yards, passed for 184, but you're used to seeing more now at Shepard. What do you guys, I guess, need to do to get that explosiveness uh, that you're telling us about that Shepard's definitely capable of? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, well, specifically speaking towards uh, that game, our defense did a very good job of giving us uh, some short, some short fields. Which I mean, that'll obviously help us as well, and, and it takes away from uh, time of possession and stuff like that. Um, but as far as what needs to happen, uh, I don't want to get I don't want to get too uh, you know I mean too detail oriented and too like chalkboard type talk with you guys. Um, but I feel like we just need to we need to eliminate mistakes. We still like there are three and outs uh, that we can't afford those. I mean, sometimes it feels like our offense right now can be. Uh, feast or famine, uh, where we either go out there and we do what we, what we should do, what I feel like we should be capable of doing every drive, which is uh, scoring the football. Uh, and then there's other drives that we come out and it's, and it's an ugly three and out. So, and some of those are third and manageable. Um, and I know, I know that there's, yeah, like that, that's just the situation stuff that I think we can improve on, on keeping ourselves on the field uh, longer. And, um, some of that is just bad time. Like, cause I, it's not that we're not completing the football. Like has one of the highest completion rates in, in the PSAC. It just feels like some of our drops when they come are, are untimely. And then same in the run game. You know what I mean? It's just bad. We gotta, we gotta be better about executing on the plays that count and not just generally executing. Cause like you said, some of the stats are still there. We ran for five, I think it was like five and a half a clip. So it's like, that's, that's good yards, but you know what I mean? We gotta we gotta get those yards when they matter. So I think that that's a piece of it. Um, and then again, I mean, the defense helping us out and giving us a short field. I mean, it allows us to win, even if it does hurt our stack columns. That's why I've never really been a huge stack guy. Uh, but yeah, that's that's I guess my two cents on it is we just need to be we need to be better about executing in the right moments. Wyatt, from an offensive line perspective, you mentioned in the past maybe working on finishing blocks and playing through the whistle. How do you feel like you guys did last week in Shippensburg when it comes to that? And just overall, how would you, I guess, grade the offensive line? Um, yeah, well, like I said, we accomplished, we accomplished our, uh, like, even though we don't really have a whole lot of stats as an offensive line, the rushing, the yards for carry is one that we definitely, I think, probably take the most pride in uh, as a group. And uh, we hit we hit our goal on the board with that, which is a good that that to, it, it makes it a good week. I don't think it was um, a great week. I think there were still like there are still plays, like I said, where we can be better at that, and that's the type of stuff where uh, 
it'll you know, like we handedly can can uh, beat a team like we did last week. But when we get to tougher opponents and some uh, tougher D lines, we got to be able to um, operate at an efficient level. So there are, I think there's always still room to improve. Uh, I still, yeah, I mean, but I, I think we had we had a good week. We did what we what we needed to accomplish. We just we just got to keep working to be better. It's always about being better. This week, as you said, you guys get to come back home. Uh, game against Lock Haven. What have you seen from them so far? Uh, yeah, they're actually they're going to be a very good team. Uh, you know, historically, uh, when you look back, I've been here a while, so I've, I've never I've never lost a, a game to this program, and I and I was fortunate enough I never lost a game to the one we played last week either. Um, so, and when you're playing teams like that, it can be very easy uh, to overlook, uh, which which I think we need to do a very good job of not doing because this is a different program than it was two years ago. Uh, with the with their new coach coming in and kind of turning the whole organization on its head, uh, they are they are fighting hard and they're in close ball games with very good teams. Uh, and as a defense, the X's and O's wise, uh, they do a good job of mixing it up. A lot of the P stack teams just stay in that four four two four 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 three box, you know, with the big four down being consistent. Uh, these guys are very good about they'll they'll throw an odd at you or get to that like. Bastard, uh, bastard under front where the the nose becomes a full zero, so it, it can look like an odd front even if it's really still a four. So they do they do a good job of mixing things up. It's a lot of good coaching over there. Uh, they play very hard. They're they're one of the most penalized teams in the league, and teams that play them uh, have their worst penalty games when they're when they're playing them. So that that's all the type of stuff that we need to be looking out for. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's going to be a difficult game. You know, like I said, the, the biggest piece is, is making sure everybody's on board to uh, win this game and take these guys as serious as they deserve because they are a good football team that is coming here and they're a hungry program that's looking to turn things around. And uh, like I've said on here before, every every uh, every week is pretty much a rivalry week, week from us here on out because these PSAC teams really have no love for us at all. Um, so it's really all about bringing the energy and being prepared for these guys because they're going to come in hungry. Wyatt, in the past we've talked about kind of that relationship between the offensive line and defensive line and how they push each other in practice. And it's a little bit of different defensive line for you guys. You still have a lot of familiar names like Ben Narski and, and Baxter and Brutus uh, that all come back. But how have some of these, I guess, new guys fit in and provided some challenges for you guys in, in practice like Kuoka and, and uh, Davis and, of course, Nathan Muley transferring out obviously has opened up some opportunities for guys like Elijah Queen who's been around for a little bit. And it's a lot of different D linemen. They get a lot of different opportunities. So just uh, what, what's been the competition like in practice between really two veteran groups overall but also some of the new guys that have came in on that D line? Uh, I think it's I think it's good. You know, we do. Coach Cook does a good job. Coach Cook and Coach Klein they do a good job of scheduling our practice to make sure uh, that we're still we're still competing against those guys um, for at least a good portion of the practice, and we're not just we're not just uh, beating up on young scout dudes and, and uh, guys getting looks. Um, so we we do compete with them quite a bit, and it's it's it is challenging, man. It's definitely different. Uh, something about just like the position of D line. Is I feel like it, you can like personnel is is a huge chunk of it. You know, different people are capable of different things. They get better at different moves. Typically, guys will get one or two really like the good defensive linemen will have one or two really good moves in their bag that they've mastered. Um, so, and, and we see that a lot. So, having different personnel obviously means you're seeing a lot of different moves, which is really productive uh, as an offensive line because then when we're watching tape, obviously you're getting different guys every week, so you're getting different moves every week. For the most part, so it's good to it's good to uh, expand our game, add add some more tools to our toolbox as an O line, and I'm sure that it does the same for them. If you ask one of the D linemen, so uh, it's definitely it's definitely it's helpful having new guys. It's, it, it, you know what I mean. It keeps you uh, doesn't you don't want to get stuck seeing the same looks every day. You get comfortable. Uh, you get used to seeing things that maybe you're not going to see during the game. So it is nice to get a good mix of that. Wyatt, we already mentioned it being a home game. I'll mention it again because it'll be the midway point for home games remaining after this. You'll only have two. You'll have Millersville for homecoming on the 19th and then Bloomsburg Senior Day November 
second, how much are you, I guess, almost taking for granted or has it realistically set in that there's only a few more times that you're stepping on a uh, home turf? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's definitely something that's crossed my mind. Um, Naeem Alexander had his uh, had his birthday yesterday, so and I mean, he's one of the, he's in that same boat with me. Uh, he's one of those dudes that, that's been around for a while. So um, you know, I, I try not to get. Uh, I don't really, I don't really feel like it's it, it's not really a sad thing for me. Um, I feel like I've I've made the most out of every opportunity that's been put in front of me, uh, especially on the field. Um, so it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, for me, it's more of like, I'm, I'm almost borderline ready, ready for it in a sense. You know, the body is getting a little beat up and getting a little bit older. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm ready to go and, and finishing this thing strong. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, like, I mean, these, it, the hits do start to hurt a little bit worse and stuff. So in that sense, I'm there, there's a piece of me that's ready to hang it up. And one of, one of my, uh, old O-line coaches, Chuck Markowitz, he's one of the, one of the wisest dudes I've ever, uh, been fortunate enough to be around used to say all the time that when it's time to be done, that like, you got to know when to stop, you know, you go until the end and when the end comes, you stop. And cause some people, uh, try to hang on a little bit too long and it can, it can put you in a bad spot mentally and physically. So in that regard, it, it that, that kind of thinking brings me a lot of peace with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, with all that being said, I, it is still like, I'm going to miss it. it. It's, uh, there's not, there's nothing like it. There's nothing that can compete with Ram football in, uh, Shepherdstown and Ram stadium. And, uh, I mean, I'm excited to be able to go and eat the, the jerk chicken and all the good vending food when I come back next year and watch these guys play. Uh, but it, it won't be the same. But like I said, though, I'm, I'm at peace with it. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, prepare for whatever whatever will come next after it, even though I still got all my all my sights and all my focus focused on what's happening right now. You know why you mentioned obviously the the wear and tear of the season and now that you've been through it so many years now and this is your fifth year with the program, uh, how 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 have you learned to I guess or in what new ways have you learned to deal with the grind of the season in terms of getting your body ready for the next week? Yeah, I actually, uh, I do a lot. Um, it takes a lot is, is what I've found. I, there are, we got, we got some dudes, uh, I mean, I, I they're like superhuman in my eyes. Cause I, I do, I do a lot. Like I go to the tree, I'm in the training room probably more than anybody else on our team. Uh, I'm good about though. I don't, I don't really take up the attention of the trainers. I've been around long enough that I really know what I'm doing. Um, but when I go in there, it's a lot of stretching. I'm probably the most flexible dude on the team. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I can actually do a full split. Um, I know Ty Lucas used to be able to back in the day. He's got some hip problems now, so I don't think he can. I don't think he can do that no more. Uh, but that that's a huge piece of it is staying flexible, especially as an O lineman. You know, I'm using my legs and and driving and and uh, exerting a lot of force on my muscles, especially in the lower body, a lot. Um, so keeping them stretched and loose is a huge piece of it to avoid cramps and getting knotted up. I also uh, I also go and do like the cold water therapy at least uh, three or four times a week down at the um, stream just here in Shepherdstown in the town run. Uh, shout out my man Derek Gallagher and, and Tyson Bajan for putting me onto that. So that's a huge piece of staying fresh as well. Uh, it, that's just it's got a whole bunch of benefits alongside it's just being an ice bath essentially for for an athlete, but it's got a bunch of other health benefits too that are really good for you. Um, and then uh, when I can, I can I get over to the sauna at Extreme Extreme Family Fitness. Shout them out too because they're they're good peoples over there. And uh, so like all of that kind of stuff. And then obviously nu- nutrition is huge. I intermittent fast, high protein diet. Um, so I like to do the twelve to eight window. And uh, yeah, so so that's all that's all good stuff. But that's pretty much that's pretty much my my secret. So. That's how I've been. That's how I've been staying fresh for all these years, and it works. You know, we were talking about it the other day. I think I got one of the highest uh, snap counts on the offense, besides probably Dustin Fisher and Ty Lucas. So, it, it's been working. It's a, it's a proven method. 